How did it all begin? Well, that's a question scientists have been trying to answer since the dawn of astronomy itself. Do we have the answer? Well, the most reputable answer, one that we all know, is the theory of the Big Bang. Scientists are now arguing the very existence of the Big Bang, with a handful disagreeing to it ever happening. With the James Webb Telescope peering into the cosmos and retrieving images of worlds 13 billion years back, we might have just gotten evidence that it does truly exist. Or does it? Let's find out. Before we begin, let's just look at what the Big Bang really is. In all fairness, the Big Bang is actually quite a misleading name for the expanding universe that we see. We see an infinite universe expanding into itself. The name Big Bang identifies the idea of an explosion at one time and place with a center. The universe doesn't really have a center, which is why the name is pretty misleading. The Big Bang, essentially, happened everywhere at once and was a process over a large portion of time, not a point in time. We know this because we see galaxies rushing away from each other, not from a central point, and we see the heat that was left over from early times, and that heat uniformly fills the universe. When looking closely at the cosmos, we can see the heat that was there around 380,000 years ago after the expansion of the universe that began 13.8 billion years ago, which is what we refer to as the Big Bang. This heat covers the entire sky and fills the universe, and to this day, in fact, it still does. Scientists were able to map it with satellites NASA and ESA built called the Cosmic Background Explorer, or COBE, the Wilkinson Microwave Ancetropy Probe, or WMAP, and Planck. The universe at this point was extremely smooth with only tiny ripples in temperature. All right, since we kind of understand the matter, let's talk about what's really happening out there. Now, even though the idea that the universe began with a Big Bang has been drilled into the minds of millions all over, the so-called science isn't nearly as prominent as most people would believe. Many scientists, even atheistic naturalistic ones, know there are big problems with the now fundamental idea of the Big Bang. What gives this battle of wits even more of a discrepancy is that the new images from the James Webb Space Telescope haven't helped those who root for the Big Bang. Although we didn't usually hear of it, there's been dissatisfaction with the current model that we've been running with, and that all begins with the Big Bang. Ever since it was first pointed out by Georges Lemaitre nearly a century ago, no one really expected the James Webb Space Telescope to contribute to the debate. Physicist Eric J. Lerner is the author of a book called The Big Bang Never Happened, published in 1992, and his argument speaks for itself. I mean, writing an entire book about an idea with that simple a name shouldn't be any harder to understand than the color of a tomato. You get what I mean, right? Anyway, while this makes him an interested party, it doesn't make him entirely wrong. In a long-winded explanation, Lerner writes, To everyone who sees them, the new James Webb Space Telescope images of the cosmos are beautifully awe-inspiring. But to most professional astronomers and cosmologists, they are also astounding, not at all what was predicted by theory. The images show surprisingly many galaxies, galaxies that are surprisingly smooth, surprisingly small, and surprisingly old. Lots of surprises, and not necessarily pleasant ones. Of course, this doesn't mean the Big Bang is obsolete or that physicists and astronomers are suddenly becoming creationists. Many will disagree with the interpretation of the data and come up with better models to justify the Big Bang theory. The problem is that it doesn't show that the data doesn't match what's predicted if the Big Bang happened. Lerner further explains, Why do the JWST's images inspire panic among cosmologists? And what theories' predictions are they contradicting? The papers don't actually say. The truth that these papers don't repeat is that the hypothesis that the JWST's images are blatantly and repeatedly contradicting is the Big Bang hypothesis that the universe began 14 billion years ago in an incredibly hot, dense state and has been expanding ever since. 
Since that hypothesis has been defended for decades as unquestionable truth by the vast majority of cosmological theorists, the new data is causing these theorists to panic. At this point, you must be wondering, so wait, does that mean the knowledge that's been fed to us all this while was wrong? Well, like most things about the cosmos, the answer isn't as bright as daylight, it's a little towards the gloomier side. We've known that the images from the James Webb Space Telescope have impressed people anywhere in the world. Even those who usually have their eyes glued to cosmic debates, they too spared a minute or two to take in those spectacular images, like that of the SMACS 0723 Galaxy Cluster which was first released on July 11th. For astronomy, the images and data gathered by the JWST make for a treasure trove from which astronomers and astrophysicists expect to reap many benefits for many years to come. It really won't be surprising if you come across more reports claiming to have discovered something incredible. The problem here is that not all reports based on the telescope's findings are equally legitimate. Eric J. Lerner's claim, in particular, of the JWST data indicating that the Big Bang did not happen is one that has left many people on the internet scratching their heads. Lerner has written a few hundred articles as a writer, and he is also a scientist of good repute. He is a proponent of a universe that is static and immortal, and which in turn invites the intervention of a divine creator, which might get a lot of people thinking. Like Lerner, there have been several others, like Fred Hoyle, the astrophysicist famous for explaining how fusion reactions in stars create chemical elements, and Hannes Alfen, whose pioneering work in magnetohydrodynamics won him the Nobel Prize for Physics in 1970, both who have babbled in the theory that the universe is static, but is that theory really true? As we've all come to know, the Big Bang model explains how the present universe with all its galaxies has distributed equally in all directions. The model predicts that the universe evolved from a super-hot, super-dense state to its current form that we see today. The volume of experimental evidence for this idea has grown since the 1960s, and one particularly important piece is the cosmic microwave background, resulting in Hoyle's steady-state theory. Alphen's model and other similar models have faded away from the scientific discourse. Looking at the vast majority of scientists that believe in the Big Bang theory, many were quick to rebuke Lerner's claims in The Big Bang Never Happened. The negative feedback and derision hasn't stopped Lerner from continually publishing his views. His articles also have a fair share of inconsistencies. In the previously mentioned Lerner's article, he claimed that the galaxies the telescope had observed were too smooth, too old, too small to allow for the Big Bang. He also contended that the universe appears to have had too many disk galaxies when it was 400 million years old. Here's the thing though, Lerner's arguments are pointed at galaxy formation theory and not the Big Bang model, prompting many physicists to call his unqualified extrapolation opportunistic. That's an insult that flew straight over my head. The Big Bang model as we know it today was born out of the mathematics and the general theory of relativity as it pertained to the early universe. Stephen Hawking was the first to show this in his PhD thesis published in 1966. So to deny the Big Bang is, in the absence of extraordinary evidence, to effectively deny the universe's evolution. The Big Bang hypothesis has been able to survive several cosmological tests because it is able to account for multiple observations without simultaneously denying others. Once Lerner's article was published online, even those astrophysicists whose work Lerner cited were quick to distance themselves from his words. Alison Kirkpatrick of the University of Kansas said Lerner had taken a statement from her article in Nature out of context. She also renamed her Twitter profile Alison the Big Bang Happened Kirkpatrick. Leonard Ferreira, an astrophysicist at the University of Nottingham, and his colleagues studied the JWST's shot of the SMACS 0723 galaxy cluster in more detail, having identified over 280 galaxies in that picture alone. The key result in their paper was the observation of several more disk galaxies than the Hubble Space Telescope had captured in its image of the cluster, and the lack of morphological evolution of galaxies in the relative past. 
These results indicated a greater degree of complexity than expected. Ferrero wrote that galaxy evolution theory needs to be updated to account for their findings. At the end of it, many still believe the Big Bang theory is concrete, and studies show that even though we can't point it out with 100% accuracy, we're pretty darn close when it comes to proving its existence. Like in most matters about the cosmos, there will be many that will believe otherwise and many like Lerner who believe in a static universe, but that theory might not be completely false as it seems. With the sheer effort of scientists, astronomers, and researchers all around the world, we're pretty sure to get to the bottom of this very soon. Until then, the theory that's been running science classes for the past 50 years is still pretty solid. So, what do you think? Did the Big Bang really happen? If not, what do you think really happened? And what more revelations are we going to find about the beginning of the universe in the coming years? Let us know in the comments below, and as always, thanks for watching Space Traveler!